Hello, my name is David Omick. Um, I uh, am a designer uh, and user of composting toilets. I've been uh, using composting toilets for almost 25 years. A composting toilet is a um, waterless toilet that utilizes microbes to break down human sewage into a nutritious plant fertilizer known as compost. So there are four uh, basic factors involved in effective composting. One of those is oxygen. Uh, microbes need oxygen, uh, particularly the aerobic microbes that we use in, in aerobic composting require oxygen to thrive. They also require water, so you need the proper moisture content uh, in the toilet. Uh, another one is the ratio of carbon to nitrogen. Uh, there's quite a bit of nitrogen in human uh, uh, fecal matter and there's even more in human urine. So we need to introduce into the toilet uh, materials that are high in carbon. This can be sawdust, wood shavings, uh, dried leaves, um, shredded paper. There are quite a number of materials, <clears throat> all of which are dry, fairly fine, and plant-based. Uh, that's, that's what we're looking for in, in trying to find a, a, a carbonaceous additive for the toilet. And uh, the fourth factor is temperature. Uh, this particular design, if it's an outdoor design, is uh, intended for plant climate zones of uh, eight or higher. That would include this part of Arizona. If it's used indoors, then assuming it's a heated space, it, it uh, is workable in any climate. Um, so what we, we strive for in this design and, and uh, the past six or eight years of use have confirmed is that uh, we do have an effective method of uh, managing each of these four variables. And, uh, we looked at a number of regulations from around the United States and tried to focus on what some of the common aspects were that regulators were looking for in a composting toilet. And um, what we came up with was a design that uh, is, is known as a zero discharge system. That is, there is no uh, liquid uh, contaminant that comes out of the toilet and contacts the native soil. Um, another thing that we were looking for was effective vector management. Vectors are um, animals that can get into a composting toilet and then infect uh, human food uh, once they get outside the toilet. And uh, one of the primary vectors are, is flies, house flies. House flies uh, are attracted to human excrement. They're also attracted to human food and, and there's a clear path of transmission for disease there, potentially. Uh, another one is uh, rodents. So the, de the barrel design um, effectively uh, keeps rodents out of the toilet and other animals. Uh, it also has a number of effective barriers for flies and includes an insect trap in the event the fly should get into the toilet. Um, they'll be trapped by the insect trap. One thing I'd like to point out is that there are no holes in the bottom of the, drilled into the bottom of the barrels. Everything, liquid and solid, that goes into the toilet stays in the toilet. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a zero discharge system, and that's an important uh, 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 health safety aspect of this design. The top is removable, so the barrel is basically used until it's about three quarters full. Then the top is removed and set over an adjacent barrel, and that barrel is used until it's full. Now, the barrel that has the top on it and that is being used on a day-to-day -day basis is known as the active barrel. The adjacent barrel, uh, once it is full of compost, is known as the aging barrel. And uh, this is known as a, as a batch system. And the advantage of it is that um, at the end of the use period of the active barrel, 
Um, that barrel is then not, no fresh material is introduced into that barrel. And so that barrel, uh, the contents of that barrel have um, four to six months to fully compost and, and uh, kill pathogens before it is used as compost in the landscape. Once the toilet is mostly full and the top needs to be moved from the active barrel to the adjacent barrel, which now becomes the active barrel, it's just a matter of undoing four springs, one at each corner, lifting the barrel up and setting it on the adjacent barrel. Um, now you'll notice that the adjacent barrel, this is an aging barrel, this one already has been used and it was, is, uh, was about three quarters full. The compost has now gone down a bit because that's part of what happens in the composting process. So as I mentioned earlier, in composting, um, it's necessary that, that uh, the compost have adequate air and moisture and carbon and nitrogen mix for the microbes to feed on and convert the uh, um, human sewage in, into compost. Uh, the way we do that in the barrel toilet design involves the use of a tool called the compost crank. We have found these to be the most effective tool that we've come across so far. Um, to use them, it's a matter of cranking the tool down into the compost and then stop the cranking and just lift straight up slowly. You then move it over a little bit and do it in another area, lift up. And typically, you can aerate uh, the contents of a barrel in three to five minutes. Uh, it's a fairly quick, easy process. Uh, why don't we go ahead and try that? So we've opened, just opened the toilet seat. You can also remove the entire top for this process, but uh, it's really uh, quite a bit easier just to open the toilet seat. And uh, we turn the crank down in until it hits the bottom of the barrel, and we lift straight up. Then we move it over a little bit, crank it again, lift it straight up, and do that 10 or 12 times, and the contents of the barrel is thoroughly aerated, and it's mixed the moisture evenly throughout the entire uh, compost pile. It has also helped to mix the carbon, uh, carbonaceous materials and the nitrogen containing materials such as uh, urine and uh, fecal matter together with the comp carbonaceous material. Uh, it just makes a really rich environment for the microbes to feed on. So I'd like to talk just a moment about uh, the sequence of aerating the uh, compost in the various barrels. Um, we always start with the oldest barrel, that is the oldest of the aging barrels. In this case we have a two barrel system. Um, so we're going to start with this barrel, uh, which is the aging barrel. Uh, first step is just to pull up on the spring cord assembly and remove it. Then to lift off the screen assembly and in this case we'll also remove the compost thermometer which we've been using to uh, monitor the temperature of the compost. Uh, we put the uh, tool into the compost and crank it down until it reaches the very bottom of the, of the barrel and then we lift straight up. We move it over a little bit, crank it in again, lift it straight up. I'm just going to go through the whole process here. Notice that I'm pulling up fairly slowly. We don't want to be flinging compost uh, out of the barrel. And about two more cranks here, and uh, we are finished. That's really about it. And the importance of starting with the oldest barrel is that we are now going to move to the next oldest barrel, which in this case is the active barrel. And we don't want to be transmitting uh, pathogens via the crank from older compost to newer compost. That's why we start with the oldest compost first. Um, as soon as we move to the next barrel, in this case we'll lift this up, put the compost crank in, we'll aerate this, and then we'll recover 
the aging barrel, put the, the cord and spring assembly back on in order to prevent insect vectors like flies from getting in. And when we're finished with the active barrel, we'll simply put the toilet seat down, put the compost crank in its holder, and we're finished with routine maintenance. And the aeration should be done about once every two weeks. Uh, you can certainly do it more frequently if you want to speed up the process, but at a minimum about once every two weeks. So what we're striving for is, is an end product, uh, a, a compost, that smells very much like humus in a forest. Uh, it is pathogen free, that is uh, all the disease causing organisms have been effectively eliminated and uh, we have a product that we can use in our landscape for fertilizing um, trees, shrubs and so forth.